company as well? Uh, yes, it really took us uh, some time to form a formal uh, format because uh, earlier people were doing whatever was uh, in their interest and what was in the, um, the need of those places. But now we have a formal uh, format and uh, we follow that. So 1995 is really when you began to get involved with the day-to-day -day operations. You took over as chairman. And now, over a decade down the line, what's been the biggest achievement really so far? Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's very n nice to see that, you know, uh, we work into uh, 3,700 villages and uh, our social work is done uh, under a formal uh, body called Aditya Bidla Initiative for Rural Development. And we treat it like a business uh, venture and uh, it's done very seriously. How often do you go into the villages, for instance, uh, you know, at the Hindalco plants and so on and so forth and see what's happening there yourself? Yeah, normally I go just once a year. But uh, we have people coming over to Bombay. We meet every two, three months and decide on the, uh, on the future plans and all that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there is a question mark on, you know, you're giving the funds, but accountability, will the quality be ensured? How do you make sure or what kind of systems and processes have you put in place that ensure that all of these things are looked after? To start with, we make plans and we make budgets. And uh, then uh, as time goes on, we monitor them. And we also get it uh, monitored by outside agencies. And they give us a good feedback whether, they give us a proper feedback whether the things are being done properly or not. In accordance with the company's vision to actively contribute to the social and economic development of the communities in which they operate, the Aditya Birla Foundation is striving to build a better, sustainable way of life for the weaker sections of society. One such area of focus is that of women's empowerment. Efforts are being made through the foundation to facilitate widow remarriages and dowryless mass marriages in the country's underdeveloped regions. Uh, once, you know, I attended a, a widow remarriage in which there were 100 widows who were getting remarried. This was a really very touching scene uh, because uh, in India, you know, widows are not uh, given so much of uh, respect or so much of care. But this was a very touching experience. We had 100 widows getting married in a mass marriage. I know you work a lot for women's empowerment in India both in urban India as well as in rural India. But let's talk about the business side of it because in a lot of the business families, the women aren't really empowered to take on the sort of business role. It's more the sons or, or even the son-in-laws who sort of come in and take over the business. Do you, do you think that things are changing there or do you think that things will continue to remain as traditional as they have been? Uh, actually, in our family, it has uh, not changed so much. We still are more hazif, looking after the children and looking after the house. So maybe in a generation or two, we'll Would get you to like that. to see it change, though? Uh, uh, not really, not no? really. Because I think it's more important to look after the children and give them a good uh, training and a good cultural background. The Aditya Birla Memorial Hospital, located on the outskirts of Pune, is being funded completely by the Aditya Birla Foundation. Apart from the state-of-the-art hospital, the foundation also runs 15 hospitals in various industrial units with an aim to provide emergency and quality health care facilities to thousands of industrial workers and their families living around their plants. The foundation also organizes mobile clinics and medical camps and conducts health training and awareness workshops in rural communities. Right now, this hospital is closest to my heart because there's so much to do into it and there's uh, so many uh, things uh, which one can do for healthcare. So this is the closest Are to Are you my planning heart. to sort of take healthcare into rural India as well in a larger scale? I know that you, you do medical workshops and so on and so forth outside of your own plants, but any plans to actually take the healthcare revolution into rural India? Uh, yeah, in one or two places we started doing tele, uh, telemedicine and we have uh, several camps 
and we have mobile vans. I would say that one should just uh, flow with life. You can't plan anything. You just take it uh, day by day. You know, living in South Bombay, being part of one of India's richest business families, uh, traveling in your own private jets, it's, it's not the sort of life that many Indians can even aspire to have. So when you actually travel into rural India, spend time with the poor who can't afford a square meal a day, it, did it make you uncomfortable in the beginning and you know, what, what has that experience taught you so far? Uh, I used to feel very uh, bad about uh, the life that they were leading and uh, you are motivated to do something for them. And then we started this uh, rural development activity. I think we'll be now working in uh, more villages. Right now we are in 3,700 villages. Uh, uh, objective is to go into more and more villages because India has six lakhs villages. So uh, it's the loss of scope still to be done. But do you, now we see a lot of companies actually doing CSR work, getting involved with CSR. Do you also sort of meet with other corporates who are involved with CSR and swap notes and exchange notes on what the model should be going forward? Uh, we are planning to do that because now FIKI has uh, formed a body uh, which is called CSR and uh, they've asked me to head the body. So I'll be uh, approaching a few other corporates and uh, that will be a very nice experience and we'll be uh, learning from each other and sharing our experiences. So in a typical day, how much time do you actually spend in office working on the CSR projects, working on everything else? Uh, normally I'm in office uh, for the whole day and most of my time I spend uh, in the CSR work. It really impresses me. You also sit on pretty much every board of every Aditya Vidla Group company. Are you, you know, involved or do you even keep a watch on what's happening with the business side of things? Uh, I, I feel nice to know about it, though I don't contribute, but it's interesting to know how the companies are growing and how strategies are being worked out. It's really very interesting. What is the biggest change that you've seen since Kumar, uh, Kumar Mangalam Vidla, your son, took over? Uh, the, the group has really expanded and we've gone into new ventures like uh, IDEA and um, also retail now. retail now. That's really very interesting. Yeah. What is it about him that's different from his father? Because I remember asking him that question and he said that while the vision might be the same, they're very, very different personalities. In your assessment, how different are they really? Um, I think um, uh, no two persons would be same, so I think they have the different styles. But uh, since the end result is the same, they are both doing uh, very well. I mean, my husband also did very well, and Kumar Mangalam is really doing very well. So I think everybody uh, has their own style of working. What about your other interests and your other passions? Because I believe you're fairly interested with music, and your daughter is fairly interested in music as well. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, she's a very good singer. Recently, she's uh, come out with a CD of bhajans, which is really very nice. There are about eight, ten uh, songs, and people are really liking it. Art is something that your in-laws are involved with in a big way. Is, is art something that you're involved with as well? Uh, like, I'm uh, more involved with uh, performing arts. We run an institution by the name of Sangeet Kala Ken. I'm the president. And, uh, you know, we really promote uh, performing arts. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, just talking about traveling and so on and so forth, do you still enjoy that? Because uh, you still do a fair amount of it, don't you? Yeah, I enjoy traveling. And uh, once in a year, we, in a group, we go to different places and uh, we look forward to it. We really enjoy it. Well, you've got, you've got six grandchildren between the two children that you actually have. So what's that experience like being a grandmother and and uh, a doting grandmother at that. It's really very uh, exciting. It gives you so much happiness to watch them grow. Uh, whenever they learn new things, you really feel very excited. It's a very good experience. All of you have your own foundations. You have your foundation. Nidja has her foundation. Mr. Birla has his foundation. So are you sort of, in a sense, you know, looking after everything or supervising everything, all the uh, developmental efforts in that sense as well? Uh, Nidja looks after her own trust. Uh, she likes to give um, help to education and uh, other such things. And uh, I'm into more into village uh, 
upliftment. Over the years, you've obviously seen a lot of sort of ups and downs in your life, more ups than downs, but how's life really changed for you? What's been the biggest lesson that you've learned? Uh, I would say that one should just uh, flow with life. We can't plan anything. We just take it uh, day by day and I think that is how uh, I try and do it. Mrs. Birla, thank you very much for joining us and thank you so much for taking time out and speaking to us today. It's a pleasure having you on the show. My pleasure. Well, that's a wrap on this edition of Up Close and Personal. As always, do write to us and do log on to indivo.com for more details on this interview. From all of us here on the team, thanks very much indeed for watching the Up Close and Personal series. Goodbye.